Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday, February 15th in the Locker Room. I'm Alan Locker. Gavin Houston is here this afternoon to look back at his time as Remy Boudreaux on CBS's Guiding Light, and he will tell us about his recent return to ABC's General Hospital. Gavin is well known for his role as Jeffrey Harrington on the Oprah Winfrey Network, primetime television soap opera, The Haves and The Have Nots. He has appeared in the primetime hit series Roswell, New Mexico, Shameless, NCIS, NCIS LA, Grey's Anatomy, and Without a Trace, to name a few. He also played Grammy Award winner Babyface in the Lifetime movie Tony Braxton, Unbreak My Heart. It is my pleasure to welcome an old friend to the locker room, Gavin Houston. <laughs> hey, Gavin. Alan, how are you? Thank you for having I me. I am well, my friend. So nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Congrats on all the success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a, it's been a blessing. Thank you. And, and welcome back to daytime. Yes. Yes, I'm <laughs> back. Uh, I don't know what in what capacity, but I am back. So, um, hey, uh, one day at a time, right? One day at a time. You know, one day at a time, one drama plot at a time. So absolutely. Uh, you, you just uh, started airing last week as uh, Ezekiel Zeke Robinson, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Playing uh, Porsche's brother on um, General Hospital. And I think they're trying to figure out who is this guy of mystery. Because my, my character and the way that I, I've been with him is, is someone who's just off the cuff, says what he wants to say, no limitations. So I think with depending on where they decide to take the character, it's going to be really exciting to see and uh, i think he's definitely somebody who could stir things up and what's it like working with brooke kerr oh she's fantastic it's funny we had a lot of um friends in common and uh my last audition we had to do a chemistry read and she's such a such a great person just so sweet warm giving as an actress and uh and it's 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 been a total joy to work with her, and uh, as well as the rest of the cast on General Hospital. Everybody's just fantastic. So it's a, such a good family feeling there. So um, so yeah, it's been great. And, and tell everybody, you told me you bumped into Laura Wright, who you knew from Guiding Light. But yeah. uh, tell everybody what you used to do for Laura. <laughs> oh yes. So I uh, one of my side jobs, along with acting, which you always as an actor have at some point in your life. So uh, it was a way to- If you want to survive well, right? If you, if you want to survive well, if you actually want to like eat dinner at night and have lunch. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so one of my side jobs, because I went to school for um, exercise physiology. Uh, so I, I was a personal trainer ever since I was probably 18, 19 years old. So I started helping some people in production and in the cast. And uh, I started helping uh, tr personal train Laura Wright as well. So, and, and like I said, she's she's such a such a pro and, and such a great soul, and always so friendly and, and, and giving and personable. Um, and so I was happy when she moved to uh, General Hospital, and I got to work with her. I'd see her again in 2010 because I actually played uh, mm -hmm. Sly Thomas, who just worked in the in the hospital. For a brief stint and um, so this is great it's just great to see familiar faces and and people you know and feel that warmth again and um and you know it's just it's such a blessing like i said i love that you bumped into her yeah. um you and i have something in common we we grew up not only jersey boys but both bergen county boys jersey boys bergen county boys we had the blue law where, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh so for everyone who doesn't know about this blue law, it's like on Sunday there, there's no, what is it? There's no, uh, you can't shop at, you know, all the mall stores are malls, closed. Right. Buying of goods like malls and things. So everything is shut down on Sunday, uh, which I don't know about you, but I thought was like everywhere. So when I went to other places, I was like, this is so weird. Like I can actually go to the mall on a Sunday and it's like the only county i think in the country that does that i i think i don't know i could be wrong yeah you know that's so interesting because it's not just county because it was also um like you couldn't buy clothes at costco on a sunday if, if it was in bergen county other right. counties you could but it right. was it was right. certain um you know household clothing i don't know if it was just clothes or you know what what 
uh, items. But yeah, I think it really started because of Paramus being, you know, overcrowded with people. And, and can I say it made Garden State Plaza, which is a huge mall that's there, uh, a nightmare when it was around Christmas time, finding parking, <laughs> shopping, you know, that's when you, there was no online shopping at this time. So you, you went in and to find it. And well, I remember I, you're younger than I am. I remember when the Garden State Plaza was an outdoor mall. It was an outdoor mall. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't always inside mall. Like you would walk from store to store outside. They enclosed the whole thing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you should do a search for that. So you should... How the hell? That's so crazy. Yeah, they literally built. I mean, it was never that big. But it was it was sort of like kind of like walking through the grove, basically, totally uh, yeah. open with stores like that outside. And then they just enclosed the entire mall. I do love the open mall. Like I have one that's close to, to where I live now, um, but not when it is freezing cold. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> yeah. know how they I don't know. I'm sure they made it warm and comfortable. Um, because this is New Jersey, like, you know, to, I, I don't even know how that would work. It's so strange. Because it's Somebody crazy. else, uh, Josh just said, I remember Garden State Plaza being open too. <laughs> so we have somebody else who knows Jersey. Um, yeah, Garden State Plaza. I know your sister is still here. Is anybody still in Teaneck? No, nobody's still in Teaneck. We're all gone uh, one by one. Uh, and it's so funny because I've gone back sometimes, like, because I went to Teaneck High School, I went to middle school. I basically was there from the age of like three years on, three years old on. And uh, it's weird. It feels like, like I dreamt it. Like, yeah, I guess this is where this is. This is where that is. And I don't know if anybody else has ever done this, but when you go back to like the schools, even if you walk into the schools, you feel like a giant. Like the lockers seem, <laughs> no pun intended, seem small, like different, like the lockers, the lockers lockers the 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 school seems like uh just different you seem you feel taller they feel like bigger because when yeah. you're a kid all these things were like massive to you the doors the rooms the gyms the lockers but now you've been exposed to certain things so um yeah it's just different and it's just different going back i i, I love new jersey and, and that's like like la right now is home but that's like home home you know? Yeah, it's, it's funny. I have been back in New Jersey since 2015, and I never thought oh. I would. I never thought I'd come back. I was living in in the city for uh, over 20 years, and uh, or 15 years. I was in this. I've been working in the city for 40 years, but living there for about 15 before I moved back. Never thought I'd come back. Transition of being in the city versus. Um, Best thing I ever did. I, I never grew up in a house. So my husband and I bought the house he grew up in from his father. Oh, and, oh that's fantastic. Yeah. It, it, and we have the best neighbors. And then, you know, COVID hitting, you know, having a house. Uh, yes. Get out <laughs> you know. of that city. That city is <laughs> yeah. Successful. I heard there's like more rats and more things in New York now than ever. I, I haven't been, but. it Yeah, it, it definitely. Um, took a turn for the worse per se, you know, yeah. because of it, you know, a lot of people struggling. Um, so going back to, to Jersey, is that where you first started doing gymnastics and martial arts? Yeah, gymnastics, everything started in New Jersey. Um, I was with a, a group of, you know, it was growing up in the eighties. So gymnastics was like the thing back then. A lot of movies had it and, uh, you know, it was back growing up with Mary Lou Retton. Actually, where I went, we had, I remember it was called Triadas Gymnastics, and we were like elite. Like, we trained every day for hours and hours, and we were so good, and we won so much that we did an exhibition at Madison Square Garden with Mary Lou Retton and Mitch Gaylord and, and, and uh, wow. Mark Connor and, you know, some of these other gymnasts uh, as, as an exhibition. And um, I was deep. I was deep in gymnastics, and I was going to compete. Oh, well, I was competing. I was going to Sorry, training for uh, Olympics. Um, but I think it was sixth or seventh grade. I just just wanted to do something like other sports and see what that was like because everything was gymnastics. So um, I'm glad I did just to open yeah, it up. It's funny and, now that you say yeah. that. I do remember a lot of people were in gymnastics back when I was younger. I was big. It, and, it, it really was. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, he was big in the Olympics too. Um, do, you, so, do you still practice it at all? I can still do a lot of the things that I used to, which is why I've always wanted to, from an acting standpoint, I love action. I love fights. I love fight choreography um, because it is a it is a dance. And I love being able to incorporate that. I can still do handstand push-ups. I can still do splits to a certain degree. I can still do, I used to do standing back tucks, back handsprings. So it's been a while, so, but it's there. And once you learn it in that age, it's there. You just, you just have to, have to, uh, it's just sometimes it's, it, sometimes in my head, it's like, oh, I haven't done that in a while. I need to do that some more, but it's great. It gives you the foundation like no other in terms of core stability. And that's what kind of got me into fit, fitness training like that and having that regiment of, of, of training discipline. Absolutely. So awesome. um, I love the story you tell um, how you got into acting. Will you share it with everybody? Oh, yes. So how I got into acting, I, so I grew up, I grew up loving um, just uh, musical theater. Uh, I, you know, Mary Poppins, Oliver Twist, and, and, and uh, you know, I grew up on so many, the sound of music, all of these things. And um, I remember my, uh, my family used to go to a lot of plays. And I went to, there's, there's two stories behind it. So I went to, uh, first we went to see Yul Brenner in The King and I on Broadway and I was like right behind the orchestra. I remember sharing my Kit Kats with the orchestra. So I was like, these guys look like they could be hungry. <laughs> uh, that's gotta be, that's gotta be tiring. Um, and I just remember that feeling. I was like, wow, they're right there performing. And then we did Shakespeare in the Park, in Central Park, and it was Much Ado About Nothing starring Kevin Klein. And I remember watching the crowd, the laughter and the engagement and I was like, I think that's that's something I want to do. I want that feeling and just to be able to escape into that world. So my dad was friends with Keisha and I Pulliam's mom and knew of a manager that was in Teaneck. And um, my sister was modeling at the time and made, made an appointment for the two of us to go. Now, I wasn't doing any acting. Do I just, you remember the manager's name? Oh, yeah. Shirley Grant. I knew that's what you were going to say. Had to be, yeah. Who else? I knew I knew Shirley. Don't ask me how. I knew Shirley. Shirley. Yes, I don't remember. Uh, maybe because I grew up watching the soaps, but also I don't know if maybe she came to the spa. You know what? It, so no, I think I know. We did have Allison Smith. I don't know if you know who that is. She was on Kate and Alley. Okay. Okay. She appeared at one of our events for the spa in Teaneck, and she might have been managed by Shirley. Shirley Grant had all the. Young she had a lot of people. A lot of young talent. So <laughs> I can't believe that. That it's a name I haven't heard in a long time. That's who I booked Guiding Light through. Shirley Grant was after college. I went. Um, I went back to Shirley, and uh, she was really fantastic in growing my career. My first job was on the Cosby Show. I got it through them, and I was doing a lot of commercials. It's funny because once I once they decided they decided to work with me and not my sister, which was okay because she wasn't into it as much as I was. But I started auditioning a lot and doing things. And I remember I didn't get a part on Moesha to play Brandy's, I think love interest maybe. And I was like, all right, I'm done with this. I'm done with acting. Then I went to University of Florida to study physical therapy, I was thinking about going Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. That's what you studied. Okay. Yes. Uh, it was physical therapy initially. Then it changed. So then I could call you when I hurt myself? You could. You could. <laughs> I, uh, I do. I have a good friend who used to do that as well. He now is in the insurance business, but he's my first phone call when I need advice. So but I was always, I think, from being, from starting with gymnastics from a young age, learning about my body learning about injuries. I remember I like, broke my heel once uh, flipping off of a mat. So uh, the body always interested me. And um, But I also, because I was thinking about going pre-med, and I also wanted to learn more preventative, not after, you know, after care, after you're, you're sick. Like, what can I do to prevent being like? So learning about nutrition, learning about uh, exercise, learning about things. Um, so I, I ended up getting into exercise physiology. And I remember I was... Uh, Still, it, something was missing, you know, and I remember doing stadium steps. And I remember seeing a sign for, um, for what auditions. Is what are stadium steps? Oh, stadium. I was running stadium steps. At the, oh, okay. Florida. 
yeah, yeah. In college, I was like, ro in like Rocky at the Philadelphia Museum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. By the by, the end, I was like, and then I, I yeah. So um, I was doing, I was running my stadium steps, and I, uh, I saw a sign for an audition, open call. So I went to it, and uh, and I ended up getting the part. But just with the audition, I went home. And I didn't sleep one minute. I was so excited because I knew that I finally figured it out. Like this is what I want to do. And then I did like a lot of plays and I invited my dad to, uh, to, uh, to uh, a play Richard the third. And I had a huge part in it and he saw my performance and he gave me his blessing. And then I went to New York and then first job was guiding light. That's incredible. Yes. I, you know, I, n now knowing what your sister's doing, I, I was going to ask if she, you know, was mad back then, but as you said, oh. it, it was never her passion. It was never her passion. She also, I was always a little performer. So then when I saw theater, I was like, whoa, I was like even more excited. Like, okay, this is where I could perform. I always, for some reason, felt more comfortable in front of a crowd than one person. And I love mm -hmm. making people be affected by my performance, whether it was dancing, making jokes. So um, she knew that was like in me. I didn't know, but she did. So I think she was like happy for me and, and, and now even more so because of the way it worked out. And thankfully I had that exposure at that age. Wow. Yeah. So Shirley got you uh, the audition at Guiding Light. Was that with Glenn Daniels or Rob Decina? Rob Decina. Was with Rob Decina, such a nice guy. Um, yeah, he really, he really was like rooting for me and like helped me through it. I remember at the end, uh, I went, I went last because I think there was like five guys, and I remember at the end, he's like, good job, good job. And I was like, so, yeah. so when you say you were the last, were you screen testing? Well, we were at that time. We would network test in front of the executive producer, so you would come in. And because I, I think I actually at that point I was I was uh, going to be recurring, so I didn't have to screen test. But gotcha. You had five guys, and you had to audition for the um, executive producer who was Paul Roush at the time. I have a cig cigar. He has no. a cigar. <laughs> so for anybody that doesn't know, so this executive producer he smoked cigars, and he would smoke cigars literally close to you to see if it threw you at all in the audition. But me, I was like. I was young, I was straight out of school, I felt good, I was, hey. <sighs> and then continue with my, I didn't grab the cigar, but I felt very comfortable. I knew what he was doing, and I was aware of it, but I was so locked in, and uh, yeah, so um, I could have grabbed the cigar and taken a toke of it and passed it back if I wanted to. But I, it's funny because, um, and then what got me to LA, I, I auditioned for um, Desperate Housewives. And, oh, wow. Alan, it was like one of my best auditions ever at the time and um, got great feedback from casting and all that stuff and I didn't get it. And then I was like, it's time for me to move. I need to be, because I watched the first episode because that's what I auditioned with and I just, maybe I was partial, but I liked what I did better. And I was like, I got to walk in that room and have that same opportunity being there because I was in New York at the time. so. Of course, what they, they casted someone who was local. So, uh, so yeah, I was, I was ready. I love that about Paul. Um, that was prior to them stopping He's, people from smoking in, in buildings. Yeah, and, and you know what's so funny? I didn't know he was going to do that. But I, I felt good. I felt, uh, but he did. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he was very close. But do you, do you remember your first day on set? Oh, Yes, I was nervous as hell. I still get nervous on set. That never goes away. And from, you know, it's, and I, I now I embrace it because I know it's excitement too of the unknown. I'm like, what's going to happen? Um, and it's also a new crew. So people don't know what you're going to do. And right off the bat, they're going to go, good, bad. What is this? As well as like, you know, you have producers, people who hired you. So you want them to feel like good with their investment. Um, in you. So uh, I do remember that. I remember I was, uh, I, I had, there was a whole family of playing Remy Boudreaux. There was a whole family. So I met my mom first, Kim Brockington, who was, uh, who, uh, who was uh, uh, Felicia, Felicia Boudreaux. Felicia, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. meeting her, knowing, okay, it's also someone else's first day, it, it made me feel a lot more comfortable. And I always, what I do, 
And I, I, I don't know, I innately did it then, and I do this a lot. I think I even did this recently with General Hospital. I like to sneak on set and just watch for a little bit. Watch the set, watch. I've done this in films, TV shows. Watch what other people are shooting. See how I feel. I go, okay. And then I walk. It's kind of like, it's kind of like what we saw in the Super Bowl. They're like jumping and warming up and getting on the field, getting used to the field conditions. And then they go back in the locker room and they're ready because now they know they've like been out there. So it's it's not- also the best schooling of any kind because you get to see it. You get to see how, yeah, you get to see it. You get to see the pacing, how quick. I forgot how quick it was. I mean, we were extremely quick with haves and have nots, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty quick. I remember we general hospital, we we were we're still wearing masks, so we rehearse with the mask, we take it off, we do it one time, move it on. So, oh, and I'm sure you know today the have and have nots in general hospital are even faster than oh, when you were in guiding the line. Because we started out the have and have nots. We started out we were uh, Tyler's first show, so. I think it was a learning experience for for all of us because he he could he could feel how much he could push on us and we got to see how much we could handle in terms of material until it got to a point where we, I think our record was 157 pages in one day. Wow. <laughs> and we, just well, to, we will yeah. get uh, to the have and have not, but sure. um, you know, first of all, you and your father are are both uh, daytime professionals who you know who could handle the number of pages that you were given because you you know not not every actor can can do what daytime performers can do oh no fear is very motivating you're like oh my gosh this is too much how can i and you end up being able to do it it's it's funny how it's just uh you know it's just one and, foot and foot um richard biggs was played your father during the time you were yeah. on, right? Yes, 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 he did, yeah. Oh, so it's, it's such a, I remember hearing the news of his passing. It was just so heartbreaking, you know? And uh, I always wanted more for our family with Guiding Light. It was like, it was, it was like filling in the gaps here and there, but it wasn't like something, even for my character, that's kind of why I left on my own. I decided to leave. I said, I just wanted more and wanted more work. I yeah, ran that the it, character became bigger. But, uh, but it, it is interesting because I yeah. think there are, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a conversation that I think a lot of people like to have. I don't know if I'm saying the right words, but, you know, black families, black actors, for the most part, I'd say were underutilized in daytime. There are some who definitely had some incredible story, but I do think there were, like you said, I mean, here they are, they created the Boudreaux family, use them, you know? Yeah, and they were so talented. Um, Kim Brogdon, who played my mom, did done work on Broadway. Um, the actor after Richard Briggs, uh, I can't Peter remember. Peter Francis James. Peter Francis James. I think he used to teach Shakespeare at Yale. I mean, so you had these powerful actors, and then it was like story Peter going to a model. Was just and then- in what was Peter? I'm gonna have to look while we're talking. Peter was just in something I watched. Oh, he was just in Funny Girl on Broadway. Oh, I just went to see that a couple of weeks ago. He was incredible. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, yeah. he's talented. And, you know, I think we always just wanted more, you know, so that's why I'm And so- Ivana. I had Ivana. Ivana was fantastic. Just, just so sweet and welcoming. Because it was really like my first job ever. And I was like a nervous wreck. Not <laughs> first job ever, but like biggest job. A bigger job, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, and had to learn like, hey, so there's a mic above you. So theater voice... <laughs> My voice. You don't need to be as as projecting uh, as as hard. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, like, I love talk that. to the back to the to the the audience in the back of the of the theater. Just talk to this little mic right here. It's okay. And it was you <laughs> and Stephanie Gachet, right? Gachet, yes. Lindsay McKeon. Lindsay McKeon, Jordi Bielosuso, um, Matt Bomer, Justin Klosky. Justin Klosky, yes. I I recently. Um, reconnected with him oh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah so it's, he's it's a like, good egg 
He, yeah, he really is. I love good. Justin. Good yeah. egg. And Jordy's a great egg. Uh, yeah. I mean, Jordy, I think, I think is one. To reach out to him. I, I, I think he's, he's working on. Um... He's no longer on Young and the Restless. Okay, okay. I, I, that's yeah. where I saw he was last. But tell everybody, I love that um, Deborah Zoe got you to come out to California. Yes, Deborah Zoe. She and I have been friends since um wow since since her i think arrival at uh, guiding light um we became great friends on set and uh always for those who are unsure oh, yeah. she played eden she played eden yes 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 and um and she was kind enough to refer me to her manager at the time she knew i was like i just had no roots in in la and um Funny enough, uh, so I was like, like, okay, and I gave the VHS tape of my like work, and uh, but I, I, you know, her manager was kind of interested, but I ended up doing like a photo shoot for, oh gosh, that's so embarrassing, sexy soap stars. It was like this magazine, and uh, it was like I, I think I still have the magazine. Funny enough, but anyway, I did this magazine shoot, and it had uh, like, uh, gosh. I can't even remember the other acts. I remember it had. Um, I wish I. I wish I, I. I should have brought it with me. But it had a lot of the younger actors on, like General Hospital, All My Children, um, a few of them. But anyway, now coming out to LA to shoot this thing, I had the opportunity to meet this manager. So I met with the manager, and um, and then I was uh, I was in. I had you know, and I was able to. She helped me like find a place to stay, and so she was really really good friend and good um, in that whole process. Of, was it the best decision going West? Yeah, I think so. I think it was. I think, you know, and, and so many people told me don't do it, not to do it. And, uh, and I, but I've always been used to uprooting myself and just being a, a, a journeyman, so to speak, in terms of going to the University of Florida when I was from New Jersey. Like my, my guidance counselor was like, you know, no one from our high school has gone there in five years, right? I was like, Perfect. <laughs> New beginnings. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I love that. Uh, yeah. She's <laughs> uh, so yeah. So I think uh, coming out here. Yeah, it was it was crazy because um, I think for me and, and I don't know if you've done something similar. I, when I move places, I hate it. I get used to it, and then I love it. Yeah, probably. Because initially, because you're like, ah. This is, I miss this person or that person. Well, people, people, are, people are always um, change. Don't, you know, change is one of the hardest things for people. It is. And I've really tried to do my best to train myself being comfortable, being uncomfortable mm -hmm. and, and doing things that I don't feel like doing what I need to do. You know? Well, does that, uh, does that speak to Jeffrey on the have and have nots? Oh, yes. It does. It absolutely does. Good segue. <laughs> does. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, you know, it, it, it must be because, I mean, you are a straight actor playing a gay character sure. um, on a, you know, the Oprah Winfrey network sure. in sure. Tyler Perry's show. Sure. Yeah. I mean, all, is, all of those yeah. things are not just, play, you know, who Jeffrey is. All of those things are big deals. The funny thing is, and thank you for saying that, I didn't know fully who I was going to be playing and that I was going to be playing a gay character at first. It didn't matter, but I didn't know because I was going, I was going to be seen for two roles and I had to get them both ready. And, um, and I knew, like you said, this would have been the first time playing a gay character. So what I was afraid of, I think, and that's why I knew I needed to do it, was feeling like, like I, I was worthy of it, like I was enough, like I could honor the responsibility, um, you know, and, and so it took a lot of like digging deep for myself and discovery, just going through the process. And it, it's the best role I've ever played for me, just because of what I learned about myself, also um, conquering my own fears, also the education I got from it. Mm -hmm. And also just playing that character in terms of what a lot of people uh, are experiencing. You know, I, um, I, I, while I was first shooting that, that show, I remember the first season, there was a big blowout. 
where Jeffrey tells, comes out to his mom and uh, I was still personal training at the time. And, um, and I had clients who came up to me and was like, do you know, I had that same conversation with my mom and dad and it was this and that. So, and just the love that I've gotten from the gay community, just for, for, for being a voice uh, as well as being in the gay black community, um, which is something that the, the communication wasn't there as much. So to have that open, have that portrayed on television, um, so many people were so grateful. Um, and so it was, just, it was just great to have the honor to, to be the one given that responsibility. That's awesome. And, and to, I love that you were able to get that immediate feedback as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know from yeah. um, just being in a you know a gym or training people that it's awesome that you know yeah. because i'm sure you weren't expecting it either no no i don't know you know i was so scared just because just because I, and i think you know and because it's 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 so funny just because i just wanted to make sure to to do the best job that i can and it's funny because so many people would come up and say, so how do you, how do you play a gay character? I said, like a human, <laughs> like every character. So like, you know, like every, it's, there's no difference. So um, I just wanted to make sure that I w was going to be okay to, to, to handle the responsibility of doing the best that I, that I, that I could, you know what I mean? And, and being believable. That was the main thing. It wasn't, it was mainly being believable. But um, being able to connect with certain things, it just, it just, it, it was. And um, so that was, that was what was great. And just what it was meaning for people and what it taught people, you know, and what it put out there. And it, it was just, it was just really, it was just a great experience. As well as like being able to do this and working with Tyler, working with Oprah. Um, you know. I mean, what? You know, what great, you know, and it's like New Jersey. People. What, what does that, you know, exactly. And oh, it turned oh. people, people hated my character in the beginning. They didn't understand it. And then they saw, they got to see a story of what I was experiencing as that character. And now they started to root for this character. And so I, 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 I could, I know that it, for a lot of people, it made them not come in with prejudices, which is prejudging and, and ignorance, which is ignoring to me, and really like, you know, just have compassion because they didn't know this. Now they got the chance to see the full story and what what my life was like as this character, and it was just having a human experience. That's it. It's no different. What did it mean to you to work with Tyler and Oprah? You know, uh, it was like a dream. You know, um, it was. It was, it was like I had to pitch myself. I was like, wow. And, and like, he, he would tell me things like, yes, yeah, so Oprah and I were talking about you. I was like, you guys had a conversation about me? <laughs> and then like, you know, so I think, I think the initial shock of, of it's just, it just realized, it just made me realize that at any moment, your life can change. And, and it was such a huge blessing. And then also just to be able to see like, okay, there's normal people. They're, mm -hmm. they're regular, and there was, it just had the feeling of family, you know, and we're all in this together. Her, her network was pretty new. It was his first show. So we were all on new turf, new territory, and we all needed each other. We were all there together, and it really felt like a family, you know? So it was just great, and it was just great to have that experience and to learn from him and be directed by him and, um, and also built a friendship. I, I, I bet. I, I bet. Well, a lot of love from the fans about you coming back to General Hospital. They're excited to see where you're going. Um, Mel said, I heart Jeffrey so much. Um, and a lot of the fans want to know, and I want to know, because I got to work with Peter and love Peter Paros um, oh. when he was on As the World Turns. What was it like having him play your dad? You know what's so funny? Um, Peter and I... And, he's I a Jersey, and he lived in Jersey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He and I were uh, great friends in New York, or good friends in New York, and um, and we, uh, funny enough, we had the same manager. So when I when I first moved to LA, I was waiting to meet an agent, and he came, and I remember him from New York, and I was like, oh, Peter, because he was on Asriel Terms and was on Guiding Life, and he was there, and I saw him. So because I broke the ice with him, 
he was he was visiting this agent with his manager. So he went in. I'm in the waiting room, and his manager's there, and I was just cracking jokes. And he, the man, his manager, and I had a conversation. And then I ended up separating from the current manager I had, and now I called his manager, um, which ironically. The first call he gave me was an audition for General Hospital that I didn't get. And then, but he had positive feedback. So I decided to work with that manager. So Peter and I had the same manager at, at a certain time. And then uh, we would just see each other in auditions. And we'd always be like, ah, we're going to get one of these. One of these is going to come through. We'll get something. So when I found out that he was the one who was playing my father, it was just, it was such a good ending to this whole thing because we kept running into each other like well, hey good circle. luck we'll get one of these like you know full circle moment full circle moment i i love that yeah yeah so he's he's such a great uh person and we have uh we have such a great friendship we scuba dive we you know and it reminds me i need to reach out and call him and say hi <laughs> you know how life is you get so busy you just get wrapped up in things but um yeah no peter's a great guy great friend yeah he, he he was a good man good man having um i spoke to him not probably within the last year we uh were on a call together um i didn't realize by the way because i went back to watch this because it's one of my favorite shows oh boy shameless oh shameless <laughs> I didn't know it was you because you're wearing a mask the whole time. I was wearing a yeah, I was there with COVID. And you know what's so funny? Um, I was just happy to be a part of that show because I had all... <laughs> so to my work client... with Bill Macy? Come on. Yes, William and Macy. <laughs> but you know, so I was personal training. My client uh, while I was, was Noel Fisher, who plays... Nikki. Uh... Nikki. Nikki, yes, yes. Nikki, yes. Mickey. I, I was always hearing about that show. I was always like, you know, and I... I'm staying in my lane. I'm a personal trainer, but I was like, man, I would love to be a part of that show at some point. And I had one other audition that was dreadful because it was an audition. And I don't know. So you watched the show. Yeah. yeah. So there was a, gosh, I don't remember which episode it was, but there is a, and, and you know, I also was personal training at an Equinox and I spoke to, uh, what's the girl's name? The, the daughter. Um, uh, she's also from Jersey. Emma yeah, Kenny. you're awesome. Oh, no, no. The other daughter. The yes. Other daughter. Yeah, awesome. awesome there. So yeah. Her, she was super friendly, super nice. And I was like, I know Noel. I know, I've been there. I was like, this energy is going this way. Um, but I had an audition to play someone who um, is having sex with Emmy Rossum while giving her financial advice. Quick character, guest star. You know, some of these guest stars, they come in, they're... they're, they're, they're so it's such that crazy. show had a lot of sex, Gavin. That show yes. had a lot of sex. So like, I didn't my <laughs> so my audition. Let's just say I didn't I didn't I didn't do a great job the audition, and I was like, oh, what a catastrophe! Trying to I blew this audition. So, but it, then it came around again, and to play this police officer, and I always saw, saw, see myself playing some sort of detective or, and I've always wanted to play that so um so yeah so I auditioned and then I, I got the part and I didn't know that I was gonna have to wear COVID masks because it was through and um and it was tough it was tough because I wasn't used to speaking through a mask yeah. um and it's a quick scene with him but it was just great and he I spent the whole day with him and uh, for that episode and he was such a nice guy william h macy like just uh, and see normal. that's that's the lesson though the, right yeah yeah we so refreshing see. yes to the star nice. the star of the show that's you know that's where it begins yeah yeah he had a little guitar like i think a ukulele and he would just play it in between and we just had some great conversations um were, were you a fan of breaking bad I, you know, I've only seen one episode of Breaking Bad and I became a huge fan of it and I haven't seen anything since. But I, I so yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I need to watch more of it. Uh, and everybody's always saying, you need to watch it. You need to watch the whole thing because I love the actors. Are you a big um, TV person? Do you watch a lot? Not a lot. I, I'm a big uh, true crime person. The only TV show that I've seen, I'm now starting to watch The Last of Us. 
But the only TV show that no, I... No, me too. I'm yeah. on the, just watched the second episode last night. That is tough. I've only watched the first episode. so I'm, it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's a, It really is. It really is. And it's, and it's funny. I'm a huge horror film buff. So I watched every episode of The Walking Dead. Like That was the only show that I'd seen all 11 seasons. But I watched a lot of uh, true crime. I watched a lot of Dateline, a lot of documentary stuff, a lot of the first 48. I love like mystery, like who done it type things and like how does this end up, you know? Um, so I watch all that stuff, which is probably not good. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, I, you know, I love, I watched Walking Dead to the end as well. I, yeah, I did. And I, uh, I, I really love that show. And now I think you know, the last book, I get scared of things because when I like it, there was some other, I watched some shows about zombies. It's called Black Summer. There's only two seasons on Netflix. And I watched the whole thing. And I was like, this is the problem. Now when I can binge watch everything, this is the problem. It's, it's so. over like that. Yeah, uh, last night's episode of, La or the second episode of Last of Us, we watched last night. I was, my husband and I had a lot of anxiety. It was a, it was I a lot. A lot of it is pretty depressing, like sad almost like, oh no. Yeah. Uh, okay. I know I, everyone keeps telling me we're going to probably watch the third. The third is a big tearjerker with another Guiding Light alumni, Murray Bartlett. Oh, who did she play? Murray, Murray wasn't on when you were there. Oh, he Murray came, Bartlett. Murray Bartlett. Okay. A lot was, of people got roots in day, daytime and guy. Like, they actually did a little documentary on the soaps. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that, but anyway, go ahead. So, yeah, a lot of people. Anyway, no, it, 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 it just, you know, um, there's a lot of anxiety in, in The Last of Us, you know, with, with what's going on and kind of how relevant with the fact that we just got through a pandemic. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's so funny how... It's kind of like it's kind of like the the backdrop of Walking Dead. Like Walking Dead, it was like kill the dead, fear the living. Where now that big obstacle, which was huge in the beginning, is now just the backdrop. But the people, because of the obstacle, have become more dangerous than the obstacle itself. I love that. That's a great way to look at that. I so love that. Interesting. So I can that, see that, that. That is a really, really great way to to look at that. I really love that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So when I went back, cause I was like, who did he play on shameless? You know, oh. um, <laughs> I, I, you know, so I was really, I was just happy to get an episode of it before it went off the air. Um, and, you know, I think that's for myself. Well, I and that's the thing. Think, think of that. You got an episode of shameless, uh -huh. and, you know, and worked with Bill Macy, which is... Yeah, Bill Macy. Yeah, and you know what's so funny? And it's just amazing how life is. I remember, so I was... Let's just say I was in my 20s, I think, when I was... Uh, I did General Hospital in 2010. And um, I never forget... Like, I went to General... General Hospital films at Prospect Studios. Right there, Gray's Anatomy films as well. And I remember... Um, at the time, it was a, it was a huge show, Grey's Anatomy, and I remember like seeing like the little uh, uh, golf cart, and they were driving. Uh, I think it was I think at the time it was Isaiah Washington. They were driving time to set, and I was just like, "Wow, he's so lucky. I would love to be on Grey's Anatomy one day." And I remember saying that, "Man, I I I would lo I wish I could be on Grey's Anatomy." One day. And then. Eight years later, I was on it. So it's just like, it's just amazing how, you know, how life can be and like, you know, working with certain people. Um, I'd actually, it's funny, when I, when I got uh, the audition for Guiding Light, I also had an audition to play, I want to say his name was Tom Hubbard, but I don't know if you remember Jesse and Angie and all my yeah, children. Yeah, of course. To play their son. And, um, couldn't make it to the audition. I was so upset, so upset. Um, but uh, but everything worked out. I'll never forget that. But I got a chance to work with uh, Debbie Morgan um, when I played Babyface, and she was she's such a sweet soul. And she came up to me, was like, "I'm a fan of uh, of uh, haves and have-nots, and I love your work." I was like, "What?" 
That's not what you say. That's my line. That's not your line. That's, not, that's, that's, that's my line. That's not your line. Because I was like ready to come up to her with like as such a fan, you know, from all my children, Angie and Jesse. I grew up watching. Oh, you did. So, you grew up watching soaps. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Who did it? Like I, I grew up watching uh, Loving and uh, 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 all my children mainly. Mainly all my children. Did you watch when Michael B. Jordan was on? Yes, I did see what he was on. I did see what he was on. Yeah. And um, it's so crazy because I see him in certain, some auditions, well, even here in LA. And I, I uh, and we go, we used to go to the same barber shop. And, uh, it's, and, he, and I know his barber. And he was like, yeah, he just used to keep auditioning and say, ah, I got to get one of these. One day, one of these, I got to get one of these at some point. And that's how it is an actor. So I'm so happy. And it's truly inspiring because I used to, um, audition against people like Chadwick Boseman and all, all the Aldous Hodge, who's now Black Adam, and um, it's really inspiring to see to see them rise. Also, to know like it can happen. We just gotta just gotta keep. And also that up. they're they're great gentlemen, you know. Yeah, yeah. great people. That, that they yeah. have, from what you you know hear and see, they seem to have kept, you know, their. Yeah. Uh, wits about them and and not let it get to their head basically yeah i, I think it's you, you spend as an actor you spend so much time in the pursuit of work and there's so many things that don't go your way that those victories are are so sweet and and it's you're so grateful and it's such a blessing that um at least the way i see it is that it's 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 a responsibility and it's uh you know, how many people would want that one role? How many people went for that one role? You know, it's so, so to be the one to be chosen for whatever reason, because it's not always just on your ability. It could be somehow things just worked out. There's an old African proverb, and I always tell myself this, and it translates into English as the river that's for you won't run past you. It's yours. It's yours already. You just have to show up in your wholeness and in completeness and be open with who you are. And, um, and not worry about this or that. So for me, even with the audition all the time, there's so many things that I have not gotten that I've been on hold to get, that I've almost gotten, and, um, that it's, it's even like just last year that, uh, you know, it's like at some point you will be the guy. You just got to, Denzel said this once, like you hang around the barbershop long enough, eventually you'll get a haircut, you know? So <laughs> you just got to, you know. Put it out into the universe as you did with Grays, you know. And I need to do more. And I, I, I feel, but I, you know, I need to do that more. And I think that's a great lesson for everybody in all ways. Write it down, put it out. Because um, I actually, it's funny. I had, a, I wrote down, be a series regular on a show over this, da, 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 da. And I went back and I looked and it was happening. All that stuff had happened with the, the, the year that I put it would happen. So, um, and I had a car uh, that was, I had it on a vision board for three years and I was able to get it, you know, um, just, be, just as a personal goal. I still have it to this day. So it really is that energy. It sets things in motion. I love that. Uh, yeah. One of the fans, Jacaria, said, I was just watching the Tony Braxton biopic and oh. he, he said, is that Gavin? <laughs> You did an amazing job, he says, playing him. Um, I understand. Jacari? Jacarius. 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 Oh, that's a, that's a great name. Thank you, Jacarius. I really appreciate that. And, you know, for me, it was such a huge blessing. But I have been made fun of looking like babyface <laughs> since high school. Because I used to be all clean cut. And so, and then I, I, they did a, there was another movie that babyface had a small role in. And they wouldn't see, even see me for it. I was like, oh, what is this about? So anyway, because um, I was like, I've been told I look like baby thing. So when this role came up, I, I went in, I auditioned, I got a call back. And when I walked in the call back, all the guys were, oh, <laughs> I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, I do resemble him. I you, so. you very much do. You know, <laughs> I, I knew I, I had that it, I knew I had that question, but as I'm reading it from Jacarius, I'm like looking at you and seeing Babyface's name, and I'm like, That's wow, cool. you really well, do. One of the best things that Tony Braxton said, I was like, 
I remember we had a, we all, as a cast, we had a dinner before we started shooting. Uh, this was in Canada, in Vancouver. She said, you know, he picked you. And I said, what? I said, yeah, it came down, he picked you. And, um, and I saw in an interview later on, he was really happy with everything. And they asked him, if there was a biopic on your life, who would you want to play you? He said, probably the same kid, you know, with, meaning me. And uh, so I was, I mean, I was so nervous to, to play someone, you know. Iconic. Iconic, you know. So, uh, so yeah, that was a huge, huge compliment. And that's kind of, that's what I would love to do. I'd love to, um, if I had to say the goal for me is to be doing film, be doing different characters, working different muscles. But if I was to do a TV show, I would love one that, uh, and I see myself doing one, they're playing a cop, lawyer, a doctor. Um, I love, I love shooting scenes, action. I love all that stuff. But then I can bring all of my athleticism into it. So I for see sure, that coming for sure. the future. For sure. Um, no, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, wow. No, totally. Yeah. Uh, I totally <laughs> don't know what I was going to ask you. That's but okay. I, I'm like, I, no, no, that's okay. Um, oh, yes, I n now remember what I was. Who, who's somebody you, you know, dream that you'd love to work with? Hmm. If you could just today, I want who to be? I'd say Denzel. Uh, I'd say, that, you know, some of my favorite actors, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep is another one, too. Denzel and Meryl Streep. Um, you know, I was a huge fan of Philip Seymour Hoffman, um, Denzel, yeah. because I think of, and I've been in rooms, I've been like literally, you know, close to him and, you know, I was just like, so starstruck, but I've, I've had a chance to, um, I've been watching him since I was young, what he's been able to do just also as a kid thinking, picturing myself as an actor, it would be his career, you know, and I think he paved the way for a lot of African-American actors, male actors. And I think the, the color lines that he was able to break and what he's been able to do as a leading man, I think is just like, is just the, the epitome for any actor, much less, you know, a black actor, male actor. So I think for him, and I've had opportunities for the, like the great debaters and Julius Caesar on Broadway and, and I auditioned for Fences on Broadway. So I've had opportunities to work opposite him. So I think with so with it's the, it's coming soon. That means coming soon, coming that soon. Trajectory is already going. Yep. So Absolutely. I just shop, sharpen my sword until then. It's funny because I had a chance. I did a film called The Rum Diary, and I had scenes that ended up on the cutting room floor. But I was able to work opposite Johnny Depp, who was so good and kept doing different things every take, and I was so nervous. But I make sure to prepare myself where nothing could throw me. And one thing I realized, it's like if you're doing a shoot around with, let's say Michael Jordan, for instance, you're probably gonna shoot better because of the respect you have for this person. So I felt so much more connected and, a and freer because I had so much more respect for his ability. As much as I was nervous, I was like working off him and it felt so good. And it was that moment when I was like, okay, all right, I'm ready for Denzel. You can bring him in next. You know, like <laughs> the work opposite. But like, no, but yeah, it's a it's a dream, and um, you know, it's a good dream to have. And I yeah, think uh, you don't know what you would do. You don't know if you'd shrink, if you'd be intimidated, if you view. But it's it's about the character. You were playing a character, not yourself. And so to know that I was able to do that was 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 was, was, was like okay. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see uh, all the things that are next. But I wanted to talk Black History Month. February is Black History Month. Yes. Growing up in New Jersey, um, was it something your family talked about? Was it celebrated at home? You know, I asked this question to a guest last week, and I love what she said. Um, it was something like, I celebrate every day because it's the skin I am, which is beautiful and should be. But, you know, with all of the racial, you know, conversations going on, I'm curious, you know, uh, where I grew up in Richfield, it wasn't a large black community. Teaneck mm -hmm. definitely, I know, had more. Yeah. I'm curious what it was like for you. You know, it was interesting because growing up in Teaneck, um, it was, I think Teaneck at the time was like 40% Jewish. 
um, and then had a huge, I think, had a huge African American uh, population as well. So it was, and it was really diverse, and they they pushed diversity, so which and in and honoring certain things. That I remember, you know, celebrating, it, although it wasn't taught the same way. Like I remember Black history or things that dealt with Black history were, especially in social studies, were taught the last maybe month of school and in almost in June at the end when nobody really cared. It was just kind of an afterthought. It was yeah. just grazing the surface. So on, I, it was unfortunate that it wasn't taught. And the town was segregated in some ways. We actually, in the high school, had a black door and a white door on the high school because the black kids came from this side of the town, the white kids came from that side, and they usually hung out around the door. So it was nicknamed ever since the 80s until when I graduated in the 90s. So, um, and there, were, there, were, there was a time when, um, when I was in middle school, there was a, an African-American teenager who got shot in the back by a police officer. And so, and Al Sharpton came into Teaneck with busloads of people from New York and there was a march and, to the city council and there was also a riot. The, the, uh, oh, I'm gonna look that up, I must, I must have. Philip Parnell, Philip Parnell um, shot in the back uh, by an officer. I guess they were playing on a basketball court um, and uh, somebody called and said that they saw a gun. When the police came there, they all scattered um, and he had his hands up and he got shot in the back and um, the cop got off. So then that's when all hell broke loose. So, um, so it's, it's funny, but, and I was maybe, I, I might've been in junior high school, maybe not. So seeing that my parents always educated me. So Black History Month, just like your other um, guests, it was also always Black History Day. And I was always aware because growing up, I remember I wasn't allowed to do certain things. Like I couldn't stay out late at night and my dad would warn me about getting picked up by police. And I'd be like, but why? I'm just going to the park. I'm just gonna be playing basketball or I'm just gonna be doing this, hanging out with friends. I just wanna go bike, ride bikes. And I couldn't do it. So I, I, didn't, I didn't get to, sometimes I hear the high school and things people were able to do. I was like, I didn't have those freedoms because my parents were always trying to keep me protected. So I think I always had an awareness I was always being taught to to be to be proud and um, to 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 always work hard because at the end of the day, be so good they can't ignore you, you know. And um, no matter who it is, uh, and you know, there's times when I I, I remember even coming to um, even to LA. I remember like different as an actor, just you know, there would be one role that was an ethnicity and everybody would go for that one role. And um, so now seeing that things have evolved, it's, it's, it's really a good feeling as an actor to feel that it's, it's leveled out and become more balanced. So I think that innately that's just wanted normal balance and equality. I mean, like, like, you know, we see all races, we walk, walk outside. So I was always wondering like, why doesn't that get represented in TV or why it has a couple of African American is it now labeled a black show? It's just you know it's it's I because yeah, there shows that had predominantly white cast weren't labeled a white show. So it's like you know it, it's it's I like I said I I'm all about just general market for everybody and um, so I'm glad. So Black History Month is a month to kind of take a, take it in, but for me much like valentine's day you have every day to appreciate to show love to show respect to honor people to honor a person so the commercializing certain things for me i'm like okay but it's it should serve more as a reminder like even after this month or even after this day continue to do it and make it just an everyday thing you know to honor yeah absolutely and and very well said do you you know, now you're a father. Do you appreciate that your parents educated you that way? Dude, they were so strict. And the, the yard work, being a homeowner, the this, the chores, I appreciate it now. It's like Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. <laughs> I, I hated it. And I was like, oh my gosh, when I break out of this Shawshank prison, I will be, I will be able to do whatever I want, be as messy as I want. And it wasn't until I went to 
University of Florida and I lived in my first college dorm that I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. Because seeing people who didn't have certain things or didn't learn to clean yeah. certain ways, or, and I was so grateful. So I, um, I love that so much. You know, when my husband and I moved back to his house that he grew up in, he's like, you know, when his dad would make him do those chores, he hated it. And now it's his house and he's doing the chores he hated. Um, exactly. The same chores he hated. But you, but at least you learned. I lived, I grew up living three houses from my high school. So I'm doing outside doing yard work. My friends are like, beep, beep. Hey, doing a little yard work. All right. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, so embarrassing. And I was like, oh. But now I'm outside. And people are like, uh, do you have a landscape? Like, you're looking at them. I'm outside with my blower. I know how to do it. And I actually appreciate it. And it connects me to my childhood is even as much as I was like, oh, I hate doing this. I, I love that. Well, <laughs> last question before I, I let you go. How, do, how has fatherhood changed your life? Oh, in every way. It's been such a huge blessing. It's been, um, it's changed me as a, as a man, I think, in, in terms of, um, having someone beyond myself to live for to someone to to help and to do it over again and to give the things that i wish i would have known and 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 the things that i wish i would have been told um my daughter right now uh she's she's 21 she's still finding even what she wants to do with her life and you know it's 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 nice to have to do it without because i you know our our generation had different sorts of pressures and we want stability and this and that. And now I have a chance to be like, I got my parents there, but it was a lot of like pushing to get them there. And, and um, but now I have the ability to say, just follow your heart, do what you love, know that I'm here. I'm on the sidelines as a coach. You've got to run the plays. And, uh, and, and so I, I know she appreciates everything that I tell her, all my failures, all my mistakes. It's so good to have, be able to, shed that light onto someone as well as to learn from them, you know, um, and to be able to filter out the things that I learned from my parents. So it's such a blessing, um, to be a father and, and, and to, to have that love and to, to feel it. Um, yeah, that's it. it I, Any chance she might follow in dad's footsteps or is that? No, she wants absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> She's seen, and, and quick story is because she's, she's seen fans and things come up with our one-on-one -on -one time and she's like i wouldn't mm -hmm. want that i i would want to go to work and then she's kind of like an introvert like me so but to me i've always told her that's people showing appreciation and happiness for what you do and that's their way of giving back to you and that's also as someone who decides to be in entertainment what i believe is part of our responsibility it's a part of the job. And I think being there, I'm, I'm always open, always approachable to people and always so appreciative when someone comes up to me. It's feedback, you know? And why would I ever muzzle that? I love that. Love yeah. that. My friend, it is so good to see you. Thank you for yes. spending Thank the time. You. Such a joy to talk to you, Alan. Thank you, you too. I hope I see you in person one of these days. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yes, I will be in touch. I'll be in Jersey soon. Don't you worry. In Jersey, <laughs> Gotta go back to our roots. Well, and I'm going to your sister's restaurant. I'll let you know. Please do. Let me know. Keep me I going. will. You have a great afternoon. All right. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Gavin Houston, for stopping by. Don't miss Gavin on ABC's General Hospital weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Please join me this Friday when another GH alum, Ian Buchanan, joins me live. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you want to stream audio versions, search The Locker Room on your favorite streaming platform. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and I will see you on Friday.